Okay. Um, so, so the recording just started now for good or for bad. If you, if anybody is watching these things on YouTube uh, or whatever, so it started now, that's probably best because here comes the physics. Uh, um, uh, yeah, VSM equals zero. That means the velocity of the source relative to the medium, right? And we're all about subscripts now. We're, it, this is all a big embracing of the fact that velocity is can only be specified or meaningful as a relationship between two objects. So the velocity of the source relative to the medium is zero. That means the source, whoever's shouting, whatever the car is, whatever's making the noise, is sitting there in the air. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, great. Rain, I'll tell you what, man. She's good, right? Like the girl has guts. You gotta, you gotta give it to her. Is v, uh, yes, yes. Great question. Okay, so to to move, and also by the way, you know what I like about Rain's question there too, is also I don't know if anybody else notices. Besides being a totally fair question and helpful, it's also a subtle way of her saying like, you could move on. We get like, could you get to the next? Like that's very polite. Like I'm not even insulted, but but yeah. All right, V W M means velocity of the wave relative to the medium. Like W means wave, like that's a really important question actually. And it, like all, it's not obvious. Even if you think you get the answer once I say it or something, what reigns, like I'm saying from now, M stands for medium, R stands for receiver, S stands for source. So, so V, so yes, V, W, oh, and did I say? And W stands for wave, I'm sorry, yeah, and W equals wave, it says here, F equals frequency, blah, blah. So VWM means velocity of the wave relative to the medium. In this case, what that specifically means is velocity of sound relative to air. And that is like, that super important question, because first of all, this is a real number, like the thing boxed in, well, here in blue, 340 meters per second. That's not an example number and it's not like a random that, you know, that's a look upable number. That is the velocity of sound relative to air at standard temperature and pressure. Like, like in other words, like just being a little bit specific, it's because um, we are really saying here that once we specify the medium, we can just specify the speed like that. Like it's, this is the staggering breakthrough of ways is that you can even talk about something like the speed of sound. And whenever I talk about something like that, I'm gonna abbreviate WM like Rain's asking about, because what I'm trying to specify is the reason we could know that in the first place. And it really is staggering. Like there's no such thing as the velocity of a baseball. There's no such thing of the velocity of a rocket. I mean, a rocket can go a certain velocity, a baseball can go a velocity, but as we all know, baseballs could go tons of different velocities. And how fast a baseball goes depends on how you throw it, right? And depends on how you throw it. And then depends on things happening to the baseball as it's going. Like if you throw it and there's gravity, the baseball is going to fall while it's going and start speeding up, right? None of that goes on with waves. That's what's crazy. With waves, it doesn't even matter how you throw the wave. This is what we're about to see in the Doppler effect very vividly. I could, this is so different from regular objects. When I say sound, it goes at 340 meters per second, which is a little bit less than a thousand miles an hour. Like again, that's a real number. When we say that sound goes a little bit slower than a thousand miles an hour, what's incredible about that is not the number itself. It's that first of all, we're saying that the sound is not gonna speed up or slow down while it's moving. That's already saves a lot of physics hassles. Like all that crap about acceleration that you had to wade through for months in physics one, like you don't even need it when you talk about sound. But second of all, also understand, we're literally saying that no matter what I, what I do to throw the sound, i.e. whether I run or run backwards or, 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 um, or send it out of a speaker that, and the speaker's doing something interesting like, like in an airplane, that's doesn't matter. The sound will come out of the source. And, and, and this is the key. This is why what Rain's asking is you're gonna see when you try to do the math now, it's super important what Rain's asking and this concept is important. The given number that I'm giving you, 340, is totally a given, but it's the given speed of what the wave's doing relative to the air, to the medium, uh, which in this case is air. What it's not, and that's always constant, that's always constant, but what it isn't, what it isn't, and this is how you're gonna solve the problem, and I'm gonna give you the two hints, and I'm really gonna shut up, even though I really always say that, and it's really never true. Um, what you don't know, and, but this is a big hint, what is not given, but what you will need, and what does drive the whole, what you'll need to figure out, and it won't be hard as long as you know you have to figure it out. What you'll need to solve this problem is the velocity of the sound relative to 
the source and relative, most importantly, to the receiver. Like, please, and this is the concrete hint. Now, look at these facts that I'm giving you that you're going to use to solve the problem. The real thing that Rain is pointing out by her question is that none of these facts that I'm giving you tell you how fast the sound is going relative to or in the frame of reference of or from the, from the perspective of the receiver. You're, you're solving for the frequency. What you're going to solve for is what note that receiver hears. You're going to solve for the frequency. It's going to be a number like 500 hertz, but it's not going to be, I mean, uh, sorry, this is, it's going to be a number like 500 hertz, but it's not going to be five, but it's going to be a number in hertz. In fact, I'll even tell you in this case, um, in this case, it's going to be a number lower than 500. You'll know you've done this right. If you get a number that's somewhat lower than 500, but not wildly lower, not like the number two, I mean like 400 something or something, you'll know you got it right. If you, or I think you probably got it right. If you end up getting a number something like 400 something, okay, that's what you're solving for is the final answer. But the rain point is, I'm telling you right now to get that answer to conceptually and mathematically to see why the receiver will receive a different note, a different sound, a different frequency from the one that was sent is because what you'll find when you do the math and the, you'll find that, see, the receiver is not, it, is receiving sound at a different speed from what it was sent. And it sounds like a contradiction. I'm saying sound always goes the same speed relative to air. But if someone's moving in the air or the air is moving relative to someone, then they're going to perceive, then they're going to, then the sound is moving at a different speed relative to them. I.e., what you have to figure out in this problem in order to get the final answer is you have to figure out V W R. I'll say that again in a second, but in order to get F W R, which is what you're solving for. And again, this is a typical exam type problem. It's like not, this is not a random thought, but you're going to, if you haven't already started it, you're going to start, you're going to solve for F W R. You're solving for this right here. That means you're solving for the frequency of the wave as measured by the receiver. The frequency of the wave as measured by the source is given to be 500 Hertz. It's like a sharp or something. You're solving for the frequency of the wave relative to the receiver. And a big hint is in order to get that, you're first, you're gonna to have to somewhere get the velocity of the wave relative to the receiver. And that, i.e. the velocity of sound, according to the listener. And that is not 340. 340 is how fast the sound is going through the air, but the receiver apparently is also moving in through the air. So you'll have to, and it's not hard, as long as you know that this is the issue, you could do it in your head. It's like a simple subtraction or a simple addition or something. Um, you'll get that and that's how you'll get. So, all right, what I'm gonna write now down are the two, there's gonna be two equations that you'll ever use to solve this. You, you know them both, but I'm gonna write them down for you now. And it's just a question of using them carefully. And I'll even warn you, you probably have to use them both twice to do this right. I'll even give you one more hint, but so hold on. Then I would, okay, so we're doing this now. This is now me shutting up and writing down hints or procedure here about this problem. I'll maybe even make a diagram, but you're, but this is the problem. What's given is these four numbers on the sheet. What you're solving for is a fifth number, FWR. I'll, I'm gonna now like, I'm not changing it. I'm just gonna like add hints in a picture, but that's what you're all doing now. And you, of course you can put any questions or anything in the chat. Again, I'm not unaware that there's an exam. Like I definitely wanna field questions about that, but let's, but we'll hold those for a minute just to do this first. I'm oh, sorry. So I'm saying, so you could start working, but yeah, here we go. I'm saying this.
Um, now again, technically everything I've written down here is all unique. Like you could be doing this on your own now. I'm going to keep trying to be a little bit more helpful, but this is the situation you're trying to find FWR. I'm also going to draw a picture that'll make it hopefully a little bit more clear. Um, the, really, the, the, the three hints there in a way, it's like anything else. Those three hints are enough to do the whole thing if you get the three hints, but if you get them, maybe you don't need them. So let me, what's always true about all waves that you're going to have to use over and over and over again in this problem is V equals lambda F. I mean, I think you all really know that at this point. And there's different ways of saying that, but we are saying for all time, the speed of a wave is its wavelength times its frequency, i.e. it's its, um, it's um, uh, meters per cycle times cycles per second. Cycles cancel, it's meters per second. That's what the speed of a wave is all the time. That's the speed of the wave relative to its medium. In fact, I should say this, I should say this. Well, the speed of a wave, actually, I'm sorry. The speed of a wave relative to anything is the wavelength yeah, here, uh, I know what I'm trying to think of. Okay, to be, to be even a little bit more, I'm saying the speed of a wave is always its wavelength times its frequency. That's about waves. But then I'm also reminding us that in general, the whole deal with speed or velocity is that it's relative. There's no such thing, there's no use. Of, it's wrong to write down a velocity without always paying attention to two subscripts, the object and the reference frame, or however you want to put it. And that's still true even of waves. I'm saying that for any given wave, its speed, the speed of the wave relative to anything, any object, call it B, the speed of the wave relative to any object B is the wavelength relative to B times the frequency relative to B. I'm saying here, in other words, that B equals lambda F within one reference frame at a time. You have to be consistent. It's also true that the velocity of any one thing relative to another is obeys hint number two here. Um, so any velocity that you might need in this problem that you think you don't have, like what I was saying before, to rate, say you're solving for VR, sorry, say you're solving for VWR because you think you need to and you don't think you have it. How do you get it with something like this? I, I cannot, or it's also true, like, don't forget. Like number two is super important. It's just the way uh, velocities add. It was a big like stress in Haskell and physics one. It's still really, really true now. It's, that's just a quick expression of the whole GPR number four thing, which is up here in black. Just reminding you that like, like that's how the velo that velocity is a relationship and that's how the relationship works. You're, I guarantee you're gonna use that when you solve the Doppler effect problem, this number two. Um, so you, those are the only two equations you're gonna use. You're gonna use them more than once, but I promise you, you can do a, any Doppler effect problem with V equals lambda F and that other V thing that I just wrote down, as long as you get them both and you use them carefully. My big hint, oh, and then I'm looking in the chat, I'm sorry, and I really do need to shut up, I know. But my big hint though is solve for the wavelength 
according to the source first. In fact, I'll take that even further if you're still listening. The way to do this is solve for the wavelength according to the source first. And I'll tell you straight up, I don't have room to write it. The reason to do that is because the one thing that if you're doing this right, and if you're understanding it, and I will draw a picture, but the one thing that everybody will agree on in a Doppler effect problem, I guess this is a big hint. The one thing that everybody will agree on, that is the source and the receiver will both agree on is the wavelength of any wave. If I'm sending it, so all of this Doppler, oh God, I really, well, so I'm just saying, I'll try to explain it again in a second, but I'm saying if you solve for the wavelength according to anybody, that's the one thing you can assume that everybody will agree on. If you find the wavelength according to the source, then I'm telling you that will also be the wavelength according to the receiver. If you picture it, it makes sense. And I want to picture it for you, but I want to shut up. But so a big hint is if you can get the wavelength for anybody, you have the wavelength for everybody. And that's the technique for taking your givens, your knowns that are all about the source and transposing them, applying them to the receiver. The way you'll do that if you follow me, and I'll of course do it for you in a minute, but is focus on the wavelength. Get the wavelength first, assume it's true for everybody and use that wavelength to unpack the velocity and therefore the frequency. Okay, I'm gonna really shut up. I'm gonna look at the chat. I'm gonna try to draw a picture uh, and I'm gonna, yeah. And then we'll go back to the exam thing. Right there. Oh, see, this is another good question. I'm always afraid when I open the chat, I'm gonna be like, why, you know, when your mother sits around the house, why does she sit her, but it's always like an actual real question. Sorry, um, oh, oh my God. Yes, okay, sorry. And again, I, you know, I don't want to make it, the, I kind of do want to make it the rain show, to tell you the truth, I'm saying, no, I mean, I don't mean to make it, the, but really that second question is such a good question. Yes, the, right, that, that, I mean, the question she just put in the chat is, is, uh, yes, the difference between VRM and VMR is a negative sign, a very important negative sign. It will make all the difference. Yes, VM, so VRM means the velocity of the receiver relative to the medium. So it means like if you're a little air molecule watching at what speed you would observe the receiver to go. And in this case, I, I guess it's uh, 50 meters per second. So the order of the subscripts totally matters. Yes, to everybody. This is great that someone's realizing this. Um, VRM is the opposite of VMR. VRM means velocity of the receiver according to the medium. VMR is the velocity of the medium there according to the receiver. And they necessarily, by definition, no matter what V and M, I'm sorry, no matter what V, no, whatever M or R stand for, then the difference between those two things is always a negative sign. Like that, that is, yes, a premise of GPR4. VRM necessarily equals negative. VMR, no matter what we are and I'm standing for, that's the thing of relativity being, that's whatever you have two objects, that's the relativity of velocity. It's like a mirror image. And if whenever you just have one object, the velocity of itself to itself is zero. And when you have three objects, velocities add in the way that I'm saying here, number two. And that's what we have here. We have three, well, even this is almost a hint. We have three objects here in a way. We have the source through the receiver and we have a medium. Like it's an object, it's a bunch of air molecules. It's an object. And so that's, so we have three objects, velocity is important. So we're going to use, so we're definitely going to use that fact that Rain just said, yeah. Um, and on that, I'm going to start making this diagram that might help what's going on. Did I say that I was going to show up?
again, I'm thinking you guys are now starting to think about it and work on it. I'm trying to, hopefully this diagram will sort of help, but don't wait for me to do this diagram, obviously. I think you have all the facts. Oh, oh, so oh, cool. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so wow. Yes. Yes. Awesome. 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 And by the way, yes. So you could now that's not the answer to the whole thing, but yes, that's key. I'm saying yes to what Rain and Robert. Oh, and then also reminds me, I got to put the points thing Pui in. But uh, uh, what what um. Sorry, what Rain and Robert and, and maybe others are talking about here in the chat, I, I completely agree. And no, no, fair enough. Oh, see, that's so honest. And I, I suspected perhaps that was true. Um, but it's great. We're all together. Like, first of all, the velocity they got is, is super correct and it will be relevant. And if this were an exam right now, they did a really smart thing by just doing something that they could do, even if they don't know what to do next. Like, I, okay, not to overemphasize it, but you know, I really admire the fact, and I think it's super important in physics. Whoa. Oh, now we're almost there. Oh, oh, good. Okay. Okay. And I'll, so good. That is the net. Now, either one of those two facts, anybody could note it. Both of those facts are crucial and we're, it's just a matter of putting them together and we're almost there. I say the two facts. I mean, the ones in the chat, like, like rain got a velocity of the wave relative to the receiver, totally important, <laughs> excuse me, totally important, totally true. And can I also point out again, she had the guts to do something even if she didn't know where it was going to end up. And that's so important on an exam. Like if you can conceive of something to do, you freaking do it. And then if, there, especially if you don't know what's going to happen next, because the only chance you'll ever know what's going to happen next is if you first do the thing that leads to the next and you'll see it. Anyway, she's right. She got that. Robert's right about, oh, oh, wait. Or I think I'm saying he's right. I haven't even actually checked his math, but actually, yeah, he's, yeah, he's definitely right. He's right about the wavelength of the wave relative to the source, then, go ahead. Oh, and I totally appreciate Durkel and Hyun, and I keep saying the name, Hyun Jung, sorry, please correct my pronunciation of Hyun Jung, or, well, pending better pronunciation. Um, I totally appreciate that there's even debate here in the, oh, okay, cool, cool. Well, if it's so right, why are you laughing out loud at my pronunciation? No, okay, yeah, you're laughing because my name is Yaverbaum. That's why you're laughing, and you should. Can you imagine what my name was before they shortened it at Ellis Island? No, no, just kidding. That didn't happen. Um, uh, it was Trump. No, uh, um, and that's not the kind of joke it sounds like. Um, yes, it is. Um, 0.58, I think, was maybe just a math error. I, I mean, a computation error. I'll check in a second, but I do think I, I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. But what's key to everybody is Getting the lambda was important, we're going to use it. Getting the V was important, we're going to use it. Either one didn't rely on the other. It's two cool things that we need, and we could have done them in any order. Like, like Durkel's response does not, res does not rely on Reigns and vice versa, or, or and Hyung. Um, so the question is how to put them together. Uh, and, and many of you maybe don't even know where they got those numbers. I'll show you in a second. Um, well, actually, I have to tell you right now, one thing about those numbers that's really right, especially that V, the reason I super agree with that V, that I super agree that the velocity of the wave relative to the receiver, I'll show you the math in a second, but the math is not the hard part. Um, the, the, the velocity is lower than 340. Like, like they subtracted, Rain and company subtracted rather than adding. Co correctly they did. Because of this picture, be, because of the way the numbers were presented, because this receiver is running away from the wave. And how do I even know that? Or what is, what, like, or how do you know that or whatever? Um, I'm doing, I'm choosing a coordinate system as always, and I'm staying consistent with it. As always, you can choose whatever coordinate system you want as long as you're consistent. But here I'm gonna recommend a coordinate system that is easier to stay consistent with than anything else. What I'm saying is in my coordinate system, whichever direction the wave travels, 
whichever direction the wave travels. And of course, on my picture, that could be to the right or to the left. Like it didn't say, I don't care, just however I draw it, but whatever direction the wave travels, I'm gonna call that positive. Whatever direction the wave travels to the receiver, I'm gonna call that positive. Um, and so if I called 340 positive, and unless I told you otherwise, if I said the receiver is running, they're driving at 50 meters per second, also positive, like that means the receiver's running in the same direction as the wave. Like from now I'm calling to the right positive. So anything that goes um, positive must be going to the right or vice versa. So that receiver is running away from the wave. So just conceptual, and it, this is what I mean by one of the cases. You could imagine the receiver could run toward the wave and that's gonna make for a different answer. That's a different case. But when the receiver's running away from the wave, that, um, uh, then conceptually that wave is, 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 is run, I mean, this is like car running away from another car. Like the wave is going 340 relative to the air, but the receiver is also going 50 relative to the air. So every moment a, a, a sound wave goes ahead 340 meters, but during that time, the receiver goes also ahead 50 meters. So compared to the receiver, the wave only went 290 meters. Like exactly whatever Rain and Robert and others are thinking is totally right because of the directions. I think that they also understand if I have the receiver going the other way, which would be the next case, well, then the things are gonna to come toward him much, much faster at like, like 390 rather than 340. But how they know, how, how you know which way to make, like the signs are the tricky part. A sign positive, always, for all Doppler effect problems, my advice is make the direction of the wave positive. And anything that goes in the same direction, therefore, is positive. Anything that goes against is negative. Now, what, so that's what they have so far. Before I tell you, uh, well, well, my next advice is if you assume that the, well, I'll say this, you guys have, I agree with your um, statement for lambda sub ws you got the wavelength of the wave relative to source now i'm going to tell you straight up that the importance of that information is that whatever you got for the source must be the same as for the receiver meaning like like if you're standing at coney island at the beach and the water waves are coming no yeah well if you're standing there the water waves are coming in then you're going to, the, the thing of the Doppler effect, sorry, if you're not standing, if you're running toward the waves as they come in toward you, or in this case, you're running away. So you're at Coney Island, or you're at Far Rockaway, or you're at a real beach, no, or you're at Jones, whatever, and you're standing there and the water's coming, the water ripples are coming toward you. You start running away. What Rain and Robert and others are saying is, okay, the waterways are, like, those waterways are still doing what they ever, ever have to do. But from your frame of reference, they're now going slower, right? Well, I'll go one step further. I'd say, yeah, there. Each of those waves is now moving slower to you because you're running away from them, and you're just as right as anybody else. I mean, the whole Earth is also moving while this is happening, so like nothing is. But you're running away. Those waves are going slower to you than they were to the sand. Like each one of those ripples is moving at a slower speed. But I would argue they're all still equally far away from each other. Whatever the wavelength is, like if two ripple, if you stand there and watch two ripples coming toward you at the beach, if you start running away from those ripples, you are gonna affect something, but what you're not gonna affect is how far apart the ripples are from each other. Like, how do they know what that you're running? Why do they care? And if they did get closer to each other or farther because you were running, then how does that make any sense? Like, what if somebody else runs at a different speed? What do they, I mean, they can't actually get closer or farther from each other just because you're running. So the wavelength, it, ah, no, is, so I'm saying, no, right, 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 right. That's good. That's well, that's that's a dialogue. Yeah, yeah. It is. And by the way, this is notice now we're getting into tricky different definitions of the word constant. Every single number I'm giving you here in this problem is constant in the sense that it's not going to change in time. But some of these numbers are not in ah, ah, woo. Whoa, I think the man is right. Yeah, I so I think I yes. Uh, can I assume that's a uh, that good way to shut me up is we have a right answer. Wow. I should tell my wife that actually. Um, uh, I believe he's right. I'll check the computation in a second, but I'll either ask you, Robert, or do you want to, uh, well, I, um, would you, I'm tempted to ask you how, I mean, I know what you did. I think I know what you did. Do you want to tell people what you did? Do you want me to tell you people what you did to get that, you being Robert? 
it's up, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to, or you, oh, okay, 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 all right, but this is good, all right, so I'll show you what, what he did was just a final step of what he, what he and Rain and, and Durkel and Hyung, Jong, sir, see, I, okay, wait, one, Oh, okay. I'm getting stuck on it. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to show you what they did. What they did was like, they basically did three steps in each of them did a step and the three steps together are the whole thing. I'm going to write it down for you guys now. And one thing that's good about this is I think this is a very deep, cool concept the Doppler effect, but solving it, if you're paying attention, it, it's an algorithm. It is a procedure. I'm going to give you right now, just like using free body diagrams and solving ethnet equals MA problems. Like it really is a clean and neat procedure that anybody can command if they just like study it, even if you didn't think of it on your own. So I'm going to show you now the procedure and it works for any case. The procedure is what these three and four people just did. Well, I'll lay out like this. It's like this. But yes, well, wait, so oh, I'm sorry. I agree with his answer, with Robert's answer. And just conceptually, so I can say this, like, <laughs> what we're saying is, if you're at the beach and there's waves coming toward you, or here you are, the bearded guy running away from the starry woman, like running away from, right? What we're really saying is that starry woman is sending out sound waves, 500 of them per second, like literally, like every second it goes by, there's 500 more ripples. He's running away from them. So each ripple is moving slower, according to him, than it is to her. But furthermore, hopefully everybody can picture, if he's running away while she's sending these ripples, which is what she's doing. If he's running away while she sends the ripples, then the ripples are hitting him less times per second than they were sent for her, right? Because she sends out 500 per second and they would all just hit him, right? Except that he's running away while that happens. So they each have to wait longer to get to him. So it's less that come, right? And Robert's saying the answer is 426. The mere fact that that is a number that's less than 500, but not super less, makes me very much believe that it's correct. I'll tell you if the velocity, if you're understanding this conceptually, if that velocity 50 was a lot higher, then I think that he would get a number that's even lower. Like the bigger the velocity, the more the discrepancy there's going to be between, but here's what he did, I believe. Uh, he'll tell me. But that's awesome. Oh, wait, sorry, wait, 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 sorry. Okay. Step one that people did is they took the 340, they divided by 500. They got 0.68. They, that was the right thing to do. What they were strictly doing was they were taking the speed of the wave relative to the source and dividing by the frequency of the wave relative to the source. We're just, in other words, we're just doing V equals lambda F, like rearranged. They're getting lambda by rearranging V equals lambda F. It's the correct thing to do. It'll work every time. 
One thing I have to point out though, to be, and the units do work if you're careful. And what you get is a wave length in meters. Again, by the way, these are realistic numbers. Like this really does mean, if you want to picture a sound wave, like a, a typical audible, like some sound waves are too high pitch for us to hear or too, or something. But if you picture a typical sound wave that you actually can hear, like the middle A on a piano, uh, what we really are saying is that that sound wave as it's traveling through air has a wavelength of like 0.68 meters. That's huge. I mean, a wavelength of like more than half a meter. We're saying literally that the space between the crests and troughs of that sound wave, the space between little packets of highly compressed air molecules and then little, and, and the next packet of highly compressed molecules, we're saying that space is like, like almost a meter long. So this is like a macroscopic, this isn't just some minor abstraction. We're literally saying you could, you know, you can see packets of air separated by meter sticks in the air. If you look closely enough, you wouldn't see a sound, but you would see crests and troughs. Um, and they're like macroscopically separated. Sound is a very, very not abstract thing. I mean, even though it, but anyway, so they got that. But now notice, I'm writing, and this is where I have to be very careful. They did VWS over V. Uh, FWS got 0.68. That's step one. That's what you always do in step one. No matter what, you get the wavelength according to the source. Just notice though, I wrote 340 plus zero. Why? Because I have to be careful about something that you'll see in a second. VWS I'm saying is 340, but please note, no one actually ever told me what three, what VWS was. Like VWS was not, this is like back to Rain's original question. VWS was not given. VWM was given. Like the speed of the sound relative to air was given. And what I need here for this equation right here, if I'm being consistent or this concept, I'm looking for the velocity of, I mean, what was given was the velocity of sound relative to air. What I need here is the velocity of sound relative to the source. Now, I actually believe that they are one and the same. Be, and I believe that Rain and Robert and others believe that. But I believe that specifically because the source is not moving in the air. Like, so technically, I'm writing 340 plus zero. That zero is a reminder to me of, of what the source is doing. You'll, you, well, you'll see in a second really what I'm saying here. Well, next page. Uh, but all right, but I got that. Right, you'll, oh, wait, okay, so I got that. Now, step, that's step one. Every time, get the, the wavelength according to the source. And how do you get it? Well, actually, let me explain. Yeah, so... We said this right. It's like V equals lambda F, but I'm just being I'm always if I'm saying something in a given reference frame, I'm being consistent with all the subscripts, right? Like they did. Then what I'm really saying, and this is the part that they did in their head, maybe they didn't write this step, maybe I don't but this is the part I have to note carefully for the next step, is that. VWS is not given. How do I possibly even know VWS? I use the other, I use Galileo. I say whatever VWS is, I don't explicitly know, but I know it's got to be, for example, VWM plus VMS, right? Whatever, like whether it's A, B, C, M, S, whatever the subscript stand for, this is the way velocity works, right? I don't know the velocity of me relative to the New York City streets. But if I know the velocity of me relative to a subway, and if I know the velocity of the subway relative to New York City streets, then I add them together and I know my velocity relative to New York City streets, right? That's how velocities work. And sometimes they're doing that in easy cases where one velocity is, is zero, so we don't even realize that's happening, but that's what's happening. What we're really saying here is, oh, the velocity of the wave relative to the source is 340 uh, plus the velocity of the medium relative to the source, the velocity of the air relative to the source. And in this case, evidently there is none of that. It's zero. Okay, so, we, so we're technically doing 340 plus zero to get 340. Now, all of that may seem like, well, that was wasted effort. Like, really, you had to point that out, Yaverbaum, like the zero? But the reason I have to point that out is, is to show you how to do the final, is, otherwise the final step doesn't work. What, so that's step one. Okay, it will work every time. Like um, every single time you get wavelength by doing 
v equals lambda f and then and then you make sure you're putting in proper v's by looking at galileo then you go to step two Always then, having found the wavelength according to the source, you know, ah, the velocity according to the source, I'm sorry, the wavelength according to the source must be the same as the velocity according, that's mystical, I don't know why, okay, that's a little weird delay. Uh, velocity of the source, um, no, the wavelength of the source must be the same as the wavelength according to the receiver. Um, Sorry, so I get that. I'm just trying to zoom. So I get that. So now I can go, and every time that's the same step. It's like nothing to do there. It's just to note it in the logic. But then step three, I can say, oh, okay. In step, in step three, what I'm looking for, I'm now almost there. What, what do I want in step three? I want frequency. I now evidently have a wavelength and I, and I believe in a minute I'll have a velocity. So I'm gonna do in step three, the exact same thing I did in step one, only backwards. Like I'm gonna say now, oh, right, just the V equals lambda F, no matter whether you're the source or you're the receiver, you've got to experience that relationship, observe that relationship. So, so if I'm ultimately looking for living now all around, no, if I'm looking for FWR, then I'm gonna say, so notice I'm just doing the same thing I did in step one. It almost seems like a big old circle. In fact, it is. In step one, I used V equals lambda F, knowing F and knowing V to get lambda. Now in step three, I'm using that lambda to plug back into V equals lambda F and get F. It literally, that's what I'm doing. I used V equals lambda F, to get lambda, now I'm plugging the lambda back into V equals lambda F to get F. But why does that work? Why does that get me anywhere? Because the Vs are different for the source to the receiver. And that's where I, and, and, and how they differ depends on the, but they differ because, so I'm saying this, I'm saying, whoop, no, I'm not saying that. To continue. Now we have lambda, we have the denominator because it's the same as the lambda before. But if we put back in the same V now that we used a second ago, then we are gonna go in circles and get nowhere. VWR, VWR is what actually, well, I always get at the end, but what a bunch of you guys got right at the beginning, the whole point of, but here's the, the explicit math of how Rain got VWR right at the beginning and Robert and so forth and blah, 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 is this. VWR must equal VWM plus VMR, just like we said in step one. So we're doing the exact same thing twice, only in step one, in this case, we happen to have a luxury of just putting in a zero there, so it didn't seem like we were doing it, but you never know where the zero is gonna be depending on the case. So now we're doing the same thing again, and we're saying, oh yeah, okay, VWR, well that equals 340 plus VMR, VMR, now here's the rain, for, I, how many times are we gonna, VMR, I don't know that even explicitly, but I do know VRM. Like what I know is that VMR must be equal to the opposite. And this is why it actually matters of RM, right? RM was given as 50, but uh, therefore, so I'm saying now, and we're almost done, I'm saying, I'm showing how they got their 290 because honestly, once you get this, the thing that always, the thing that people always want to know is like how to do the positive and negative signs. That's what, and they make a big difference in the Doppler effect, but that's what always confuses people. But I'm saying if you're careful about this, the positives and negatives reveal themselves clearly. As long as you call the direction of the wave positive and everything else negative, then what this step is saying here is, oh, the air is going at 50 meters per second past the receiver, like the receiver's running away, the receiver is 
the receiver is running away um, from the air. Like, and that's the point. The receiver is running through the air. The air totally matters because it dictates the speed of sound. He's running away from the air. Therefore, uh, the air is running away from him toward her, right? The air is going to the left at 50 meters per second, according to him. Therefore, so if this is true, I'm going to plug that into there. I'm going to, and again, I'm right now I'm slightly dragging out something that Rain and Robert did in their head and might not have thought it through this way, but this I'm dragging it out because this will work every time for every problem, even if you've lost sight of what's going on, or also this will show you what to do with the numbers. So I'm saying, again, I'm saying, uh, I'm being a little careless whether I leave in these arrows or not, but so this is 340 plus minus, right? That's where they, and they might have, of course, you can just say 340 might, but anyway, look at this. So, like they said right at the beginning, the velocity of the wave relative to the receiver is 290. Now, they, so now I can finish the problem and say, oh, so V W R equals, I'm sorry, F W R equals V W R over Lambda W R. And now we're saying V W R is 290. Lambda W R is that thing from before 0.68 meters. And if you do that on a calculator, you get the Robert thing, I would imagine. Yep. He's the man. Everybody's the man. Uh, uh, I'm just going to make this more legible. I'm just making this more legible. It's correct. I'm just making it more legible if possible. That is the answer. I'm totally impressed. I, you guys actually helped me with that more than I might have thought. Like, like I, I know I dragged out the explanation, but I do feel like a number of people in this room clearly just did that or get that. And I, and I know there's tons more people that do get it, even if they didn't say something right then. Um, that is the answer. Again, what that means in to put it in perspective is like if it, it means, and we will move. I will. Well, we will move on. It means. That in this situation here, that she sent out a 500, like she sent out 500 hertz tone, but he heard a 426 hertz tone. She went, ah, he heard, uh, um, and they're both right. And, and, and if they had tape record, I used to do this a long time when I taught in high school, like I taught in Louisiana for four years. And we used to do this with cars and convertibles, like on the road. And you can have tape recorder or whatever, we didn't have, whatever. You could have like iPhones, with you. And I'm serious. Like if someone's in a car hitting the horn and recording it while they're approach, while someone else is like running away from them and they have a tape recorder and you come back after the whole situation and put the two tape recorders down and play the sounds, they will be different. Like, like it, they are different sounds. If you're following the logic though, you can also see it totally makes a difference that, that here the receiver was running away from the source. What you're going to do next and you will, and I will shut up and I will be uh, while you're doing this, I will put things in your box about the exam and stuff. But um, hopefully you can see when you do this next, all I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to change numbers. I'm just going to change directions and ask you to solve for what happens if the guy is running, to, if the receiver is running toward uh, the source. I think hopefully you can picture if you're running toward, well then 
the ripples aren't hitting you more frequently than they were sent, right? Um, and you might and you might even guess if you're running towards at 50, maybe the frequency will be. Uh, well, I mean, definitely the frequency that you'll receive will be higher than 500. You might even look at these numbers and guess how much higher than 500 it might be, and your guess might even be right or might not. Um, but I, hopefully you can imagine that if you run toward a wave, you get a higher frequency than was sent. And if you run away from a wave, you get a lower frequency. Similarly, if the source runs toward you, you'll get a higher frequency. If the source runs away, you'll get a lower frequency. Those are the four cases right there. What I'm, um, if, uh, if that makes sense, uh, what am I forgetting? Yeah, I, um, but that, so, so the answer is 426 for this situation. What I'm gonna say now, and I'll try to write it again, I'm gonna ask you all, if you get it at all, do the exact same thing. I want you to take the exact same numbers and solve for the exact same unknown, which is F W R. Same numbers, solve for the same unknown, do the exact same procedure we just did. Like get wavelength. Well, the procedure again is use V equals lambda F to get wavelength at the source, then assume that the source wavelength and the receiver wavelength are the same. So then do V equals lambda F again to get the frequency at the receiver. You're doing V equals lambda F to get a lambda because you know V and F. And then you're using that lambda to do V equals lambda F again to get the F. But why you're not gonna go in circles is you're gonna be careful about the V throughout. You're gonna realize at every step that whatever V you're putting in, has to be consistent with subscripts with everything else. And the, whenever you have a V that you've got to put in, but you don't, but you aren't explicitly given, you use VAC equals VAB plus VBC. Like the, that's what's happening here. I'm gonna ask you all to do the exact, please solve the exact same problem, but this time do case two, meaning, and you might even guess what the answer is. And I'm, I'm not actually even sure that that guess is right. I mean, you have to do it either way to see if your guess is right. but because there are some surprises here, but I'm saying do this exact same thing, only now do it this way. And so what I'm really saying as a huge, huge hint, if we do the same situation, but and we again solve, if we again are looking for FWR, if that's what the problem is, which it is, and if we again assume that FWS is given as 500 hertz. The only thing I'm saying now is change that 50 to a negative 50. I wouldn't always be that explicit, but realize that the guy runs away now, what you're gonna change is that 50 to a negative 50, but do the whole same procedure with that and see what answer you get. Maybe make a guess first if you're following this, maybe guess an answer and then see how close your answer is. But I'm gonna show, I'm asking everybody to do exactly what we just did. So this is real practice now. I mean, no mystery. If you're following what I'm doing, I'm asking you to do the exact same thing again. But solve, so this is now case two. This is the case. I'm writing too much. All the same, except now you assume that the receiver approaches the source rather than receding away from the source. In other words, you're gonna now make this a negative. Uh, I wouldn't always tell you that in an exam. I wouldn't always tell you that that's what that means, but it is what it means. So I will show up, you please try to do that. I'll take any, like, it could take a couple of steps. By the way, if you go really fast, if you've already solved it and you're pretty sure, besides the fact you could certainly put an answer in the private chat or whatever, I will say, if you're really fast and you're already done, or you then move on and try the other two cases. And what are the other two cases? They would be, the, the other two cases would be the receiver standing still while the source either moved toward it at 50 or away at 50. In other words, we're gonna keep all these numbers the same, but look at four different combinations of what the numbers could be doing, okay? And we're gonna get four answers. So I think we're just gonna do the next one all together now, but if you're flying, try all four. And you will see something interesting. There are surprises. There's, uh, that there's a reason there's four cases. But everybody right now, just try the second case where the receiver approaches, so just change this 50. So I'll summarize it one more time on the next blank page so, so that it's clear, but then I'll shut up and you do it. And, it, and maybe, maybe move, 
if you have thoughts, maybe even keep them for a moment because I'm going to try to put a document for you and do the other thing while we're. But all right, so I'm going to shout. It, God, can I get any? Is it clear what we're doing? Uh, can I get a thumbs up or an anything if it's sort of clear what I'm asking you to do? Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Oh, Ray, how are you? Good to see you. Okay, no, great. Thank you, Dirk Hell. Thank you, Casey. I totally agree. And yes, and thank you. Okay, so I'll shut up. But again, anything I'm writing now is just to summarize the same thing. It's not. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ha! Ha! No, I did, yes. Oh my God, oh, it's one, oh, I see why he's saying that, oh crap. Oh, I didn't realize, oh, sorry, I ran away with myself. All right, all right, all right, wait, wait. Totally fair, what's your, I mean, a good joke, but also fair, I didn't realize it was 130, I thought it was, okay, so wait, let me ask, I'm gonna, I, I, I was about to put a practice exam in your thing right here, I'll do it in two minutes, even when we're all gone, but let me ask you all, what, when did we, I was about to give a practice exam to start talking about it and stuff, but, but, and I will give it, I won't talk because we're done, but can you guys remind me, I'm so sorry, when did we say the exam, we did say, right, we did make a decision, did we say when, or no, we didn't, like it's, could someone, uh, and if you're afraid to say, oh, yeah, yeah. right, okay, that makes sense, that, that does, you know, Oh, you this Wednesday. Right? Okay, I'll say right now because I took longer. Oh, oh. Yeah, although if I, okay, that sounds right. And I'm sorry to keep everybody for two seconds or anybody can go right now if you want, but I do want to, I don't want to leave you hanging with the exam. So if you, anybody who has a minute to wait for this is great. That does sound right. And the 11, I said I'd post the 11, that sounds right. but. I don't think it could then be due the 10. I made this. I think if I posted the 11th, it would be due. Uh, it couldn't be due the day before. It would be due. Um, okay, but bottom line, here's right, right, okay. Here's what I think I want to say right now. So I know we went through a long time to approve this and everything, but because I took a little longer today than I want to end because I missed class on Tuesday. If it's okay with you guys, I will say instead I would post the exam instead of the 11th, which is Wednesday. How about we say instead that I post it Thursday evening? In other words, uh, yes, after class. So we would still have, so this is what, so we, instead of, let, I'm proposing a quick change that hopefully is for the better for you guys, but if it's not better, let's not do it. I say instead of the 11th, I post it Thursday night. 
So we still have two more classes before it's even posted. And, and I will post a practice exam tonight. So you'll have a practice exam and two classes with solutions will come. So you'll have two classes to talk about the practice exam, get yourself geared up, da 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 da. Then I'll post it Thursday night after we've had two classes and talked about it and, and assured ourselves we know what's going on. I'll post it Thursday night and then it would be due um, before class the following Tuesday or yeah, or maybe Monday, but, but you'd have the whole weekend to do it. And, well, you know, we'll say it would be due before class on Tuesday. So you, it would ruin your weekend perhaps, but you would have the whole weekend to do it. And of course it's take home. I think we discussed all this. It's take home. You all talk amongst yourselves, blah, blah. But I'm at, so I, I'm gonna put this in the quick, whoever's left here. I'm basically saying I'm today gonna give you a practice exam. I mean, post it, it doesn't count for anything. It's for practice, blah, blah, blah. But given that, then I post on Uh, yeah, uh, that is what I'm, that's correct. And I'm trying to write it officially in the chat now. And, and if you all agree, then I'll put it officially in the stream. But that is what I propose. Yes, I'm saying, oh, that's good. Th that's God. <laughs> okay. No, that good. Thank you. Um, and I'm just writing it in the survey. Um, do to be submitted. Tuesday, the, uh, Tuesday, the 17th, right? Assuming that's not Thanksgiving or whatever. Uh, 17th, that's right. Yes. Thursday evening. Uh, Thursday evening. Uh, 12th, right? Okay. If whoever's left, sorry to keep. So this is my new proposal I just put in the chat. If, if anybody, if you're not, if you're not okay with that, adjustment. So again, that gives more, so we can talk about it more. It'll give you more time to see it before blah, 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 blah. If anybody has a issue with what I just proposed, does that work? Can I get, can, if you have an issue, please put it in the private chat or, or public if you want, but if you're still here, I don't want to keep anybody, but if you don't have an issue with it, if you're okay with that, could I get an electronic hand or any, and the, and this would be kind of a great, great. Thank you. Um, and it is kind of important that, thank you. I do appreciate it because I do know this is a change. Okay, cool, I appreciate it, all right. And I'll put that in the stream so it's a fit, thank you. All right, so in the stream, I'm just gonna write those details again so it's clear in your stream that that's what we're saying, that the test is not till next, the test won't happen until next week and you'll have the weekend to do it and I'll put the practice exam in the thing tonight. All right, thank you very much for agreeing. Um, sorry about that, okay, but we'll go. Uh, thank you guys. Um, uh, you are the, and I'll post this and power to the people, Quark bless America. Um, oh, goodbye. Just someone say goodbye. Okay. Well, goodbye.